Hello and a very warm welcome in this Bitwig tutorial. In this episode I talk about the convolution reverb, what it is and what you can do with it. I'll show you now, but let's get started. So this is the convolution reverb and it sounds like that. And in front of it I put a um, polymer device with a saw um, wave and a sub sine wave and this sounds like that and with the convolution reverb like that. So convolution reverbs are sampled reverbs so um, the technique is to go in a room in a hall somewhere where you want to um, get the reverb there then you take one microphone two microphones four microphones or whatever microphones and put them in the room and send an impulse in this room and then you record this impulse with those microphone microphones and then this is converted to an impulse or impulse signal and this impulse signal is put in here what you can see right now, like a wave file, or like a wave form, uh, for example. So there are a lot of um, impulses, like mono, stereo, quadraphonic impulses, and um, this could uh, lead to different um, responses in the room and uh, um, different um, results in the effect signal. And uh, with uh, well, we will see that in a in a minute um, when we come here to the display. But that's um, that's the let's say the basic explanation of convolution reverbs. So there's the tune knob, and with this tune knob, you can tune the reverb like. Um, pitch it higher and if you pitch a sample higher and there's nothing like uh, stretching or warping or anything the uh, the sample gets smaller because it's played faster and the same when you play it pitch it down and play it slower And double click gets it back to the middle and then there is a brightness toggle uh, not toggle um, knob brightness knob and this brightness knob uh, does the following so if you have the spectrum and this is even and if you put the brightness knob on the uh, right side on the right side then it emphasizes the higher frequencies and attenuates the lower frequencies so you get this tilt spectrum what you maybe know from the explanation of the eq of the eq or eq plus because there is there is um, um, an option tilt and this uh, puts um, this horizontal line in like uh, more emphasized or more um, attenuated region but on the EQ this is just vi visual and here it is um, not visual because here it is attenuating or um, boosting the frequencies so if I take this chord again Okay, double click. Then there's a pre-delay and pre-delay is nothing else than um, putting a short delay between the original signal and the effect signal. So no pre-delay sounds like this. So this, the, <laughs> you could say pre-delay is a little bit like a hiccup. So it needs just 200 millisecond, milliseconds to start the um, the reverb, and here it's instant with the original signal. It starts a little bit later than the original signal. 
Okay, and then we come to the display over here. In the display, there is um, this, like the um, this um, a directory symbol. And if you click on that, you see all the different um, impulse responses in this browser. And let's make it a little bit smaller so you see more of the impulses. You get the right impulses. And uh, they are they are categorized in those categories. That's why they called categorized. Why it's called categorized, and there are real halls, real rooms, springs, studio halls, studio nonlinear, studio plates, studio rooms, studio specials, synthetic ones, and the synthetic ones are like those, those. Um, let's take this one. Okay, and you see as well when when you choose one of those, I take the all any category right now. Um, if you choose those, you see the names of it. You see uh, um, a visual of the impulse response, and you see down here the time the. Um, the reverb the impulse will take so there are like nearly 500 milliseconds nearly one second and um, sometimes you think okay um, this is like uh, nearly two seconds but you can't hear two seconds that's um, sometimes because um, low or mid frequencies are not that um, reflected uh, from the imp from the um, original room so maybe only high frequencies are there and uh, this is sometimes hard to hear but um, i will show you how you can hear that or emphasize them in a minute so let's take this one because uh, or maybe just this is 1.7 this is 1.8 this sounds like more like that but here's this little high frequency or this 1.5 seconds this even sounds longer than this one okay and um, there's another category or channels this is the um, mono stereo and quadraphonic and with the quadraphonic uh, this is a quadraphonic you see a four channels the um, sample rate and the time if i click ok over here then you see as well the name then four channels down here and the time let's do that bigger and now you have here the display with the start and the end marker so you could reduce this um, impulse to uh, less than the original one you see here how long this impulse right now is so 464 or even less for example and um, when you click over here right now, this control named click, um, and this has the function toggle, um, you can switch the display to an envelope display. So here you have start and end point, and here you have an, an envelope display. And with this envelope display, you could um, increase or attenuate the, uh, the signal over here and at the end the same you can increase attenuate and in the middle this button you can move it around so you can or not you cannot only um, uh, gain uh, give some gain to the signal you can put it as well uh, somewhere in the time axis uh, left or right so and as well you have on the left side double click gets it back to default state on the left side in the inspector over here you have the same controls like you have here you have the start and end marker here you have um, the volume envelope where you can go up and down double click up and down 
like here and like here. And uh, one important thing is you can reduce a four channel like we have here right now, a four channel impulse to stereo. So if you think, okay, um, that's too much, but I like the sound and want to, uh, um, uh, uh, don't want to stress my CPU, I can reduce it to stereo and it uses less CPU. And for example, um, a nice thing is when you put your start and end markers somewhere here, and, but you need to be a little bit preciser. You can switch over to the envelope. And as you can see, you can't see the whole impulse anymore because the beginning was here like a transient like this. And if you go over here, the transient is gone. And that's a very nice feature because in this view, you can zoom in like here. Zoom in and zoom out like here. And the, you, you can uh, navigate here very precisely um, inside the impulse. Okay, um, let's go over to the next knobs. The one here is a width. This is the stereo width. And you can put that on mono, for example. Maybe I should use, maybe I should use another impulse so you can um, hear that far better. This one maybe. Okay, this is mono, this is normal stereo, and this is 150% stereo. And I always think sometimes less is more. So then you have a wet chain, and this is something um, I needed the other wave. <laughs> this one. You can gain. Uh, you can give gain to the wet signal. So in this case, but everything will be will get gain as long as you don't take it away. And put it like that. And now you hear the higher frequencies in, at that point, for example, or you could use that as well. That. Instead of double clicking, nightmare this one and then there is the mix knob to uh, mix the original with the uh, um, effect signal so 100% is just effect zero is just original and 50 is a mixture of half and half 50 50 and um, now let's get to um, the last uh, things like when you like this impulse over here but you would like to, you want like to change it in a way. You can open, you can open the browser, but I just decrease the size here a little bit. You can open the browser and just drag and drop this file somewhere on an audio channel. For example, like this. So I have um, a, a clip, an audio clip on my audio channel and this is the impulse like this the four channel impulse so now you can work on this impulse you could do everything you want to do with uh, or you, what you uh, like to do on um, on your regular clip or waveform i just add gain here a lot <laughs> um, like this one, this is the impulse, could increase the gain, hopefully, everything, I bounce it in place, for example, then it's, then I convert it to stereo, 
Now we gain it again. Bounce it again and gain it again. So a normalize function would be nice. <laughs> I don't have all this gaining, gaining, bouncing, gaining, bouncing. So and now I could, for example, do again some gaining here over here, like that. That, for example, maybe fade out at the end, like that. And bounce that again, control B. So this is my response, a very um, gained response. But I could as well do some other stuff, like deleting stuff, for example. Like this, for example, or rearrange it, like something over here, and this more like here, uh, do some fades over here, like this one, with all those, like this, for example, and uh, bounce it again, and then put it back, come on, put it back in my convolution reader. And now I have this convolution, and when I play it, completely different to the one um, I had before. Maybe I should uh, then um, save this with a oh sorry with a different name, like Mainz, for example. This German for Main. That's mine. That's mine is mine's. For example, and now you could do it like that. Now you have your own um, impulse response. But you can use it as well like uh, normal wave files, for example. Just a random wave file or flag files. Or you could create with some um, impulse response editors your own um, impulses. But um, you could just take some um, audio files, edit them in the arranger, do some stuff to it, and then um, put it inside the convolution reverb and you're ready to use it. Okay, I think that's all right now. Maybe I forgot something. I don't think so. I'm sure you have the wet, um, um, wet FX controller uh, container where you could, for example, some distortion or some other things in there, even like, uh, for example, delay two or something. And if you, for example, just want uh, a short impulse response from the um, convolution reverb to put that in a delay and distort it later and end up in, for example, a reverb over here. Maybe I should put that in the wetfx container on full mix over here. Like that and maybe, okay, if it's on full mix doesn't matter, so I could put a chorus device, for example, as well, to do some chorus on it. Uh, where is it? This is <laughs> the 80s analog convolution reverb. For example, Okay, but that's all right now, and I would like to ask you something.
because that helps me very uh, very much if you like and subscribe my channel and uh, share the videos and the most thing i really like is uh, when you leave a comment best thing um, with maybe an idea a, a hint um, something a question you don't know or just some information or just say hello that was be, would be very nice because i'm always interested to hear or read um, who is watching these uh, tutorials and maybe if you have a good uh, tip what you can do with it or maybe to some uh, nice resources please don't post links because youtube is deleting them just put it in there maybe others want to read them as well and i'm happy to get those information so um, if you can give some information, it would be very nice to read about it. So that's all everything about the convolution reverb. I hope you had a great time. <laughs> I had a great time. And um, yeah, I hope I see you soon again in the next video or in some other videos. Stay healthy. See you soon. Ciao, ciao.